Welcome to Symbol Tech Working Bench. Hello, my friends. I know that uh, lots of you you are waiting for this uh, video where I'm going to talk about this. Uh, electronic components uh, tester that I built uh, a few days ago and I post uh, some photos in some uh, Facebook groups and after I post that uh, photos I get subscribers and lots of the lots of uh, people was asking me to provide more details about this uh, this gadget because I start to build this one, which is the power supply for my hybrid amplifier that I'm building. And then, before to get to this one, where I have uh, all the PCB board and all the components that I already tested one by one with my tester to be sure that they they are the same on left channel and right channel to have the same sound. I test also the the, the amplification uh, factors of uh, transistors to be the same on each channels to so sound the, uh, the sound to be the same and uh, maybe also lots of uh, people from uh, audio groups in Facebook same they also subscribe because I say that I'm gonna post a video once I'm gonna build uh, my amplifier. So that one will gonna be the next video after this one, because after I'm gonna finish to shut these videos for this uh, tester, I'm gonna start to move on to start to solder the components on the on the amplifier board. Because yesterday I spent a bit time to. to test all the components and to find them to be similar and then also I prepared the I drilled the holes on this uh, heat sink and I put the screws because here they were gonna be the the four uh, big transistors and today I say that I'm gonna make the video for the tester to release it and then I'm gonna move forward on my amplifier so why I come with this uh, with this uh, tester? Because I was like, when was that Sunday? Because Sunday usually I'm not doing stuff. I'm just more maybe more relaxing and reading and learning stuff more about electronics. I was looking on on eBay. Let me also show you about what I was looking on eBay. So I was looking for something like this one a components tester and then I look dig more into and I find that was driving by a Atmel chip so I say if it's Atmel chip maybe I can find a w around the thing uh, in internet some codes at least to drive me and some schematics and this to drive me for this uh, this tester that I made it so searching about Arduino testers searching about these components like the testers get on these websites where we was talking about uh, about this kind of tester yeah. I don't find too many things here should be one from where I get also uh, the code that I then uh, 
work work a bit on it. Let me find if I can find that uh, that uh, it was not on that was a, a site where it was mentioned only about Arduino. So let me find that site. Yeah, so I get inspiration from this from this uh, side because uh, here is explaining a bit uh, about the tester and stuff like that, and then it's also give you the sketch over here. If you can see, is this one the sketch, and you just need to download it. So you just download this sketch also from here, clicking on this. Uh, download from, from this uh, website and clicking on download sketch here and it will gonna be a, a zip file here it shows you the schematics but don't follow these schematics because it's totally mess it around so the connection are not like that so are a bit different because I tried to do this schematic and something was not working per uh, perfectly so then I went to search more more deeper 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 and I find my and I designed my uh, my schematic I'm gonna show you in 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 a minute and then also I will gonna link the I'm gonna attach the link from where you can download also from my side the, the the code a bit modified and uh, also the schematic that I draw it. So let's go back to that one to show you. So yeah, so I was I was about to buy one and I say why I need to spend all that money for one of this one when I I can try to to bank by myself. I already have Arduinos and I have already uh, displays around. I was looking for a Nokia display like that, but I couldn't find around my house nothing like this kind of display so the only thing is what I can find I find it handy it was just this 2x60 2x16 uh, LCD display so let's go back to what I prepare here so I prepare here so once you download it we're gonna have a, a zip file like that Arduino tester you just need to unzip it and you're gonna end up with a folder like this one and once you open the folder you need to have all these sketches inside one folder because when you open the sketch so when you open the sketch make sure that you have all these multiple sketches in one sketch to be sure that it's working If you click here, there is lots and lots and lots, lots of sketches inside of one sketch. Okay, make sure that you get like that the sketch, exactly how it shows in my, my computer right now. And then, will not work in Arduino Nano straight away because it's working only... It's working good in Arduino Uno. Here you can also, I think, define to work on mega or in other things but i tried and i couldn't make it if i put a mega mega start to run in a serial mode and doesn't do nothing i put on nano nano doesn't have enough space to run the, uh, the program so what i did in order that i now i how you can see it's running in one nano so i take a nano and I uh, put the Arduino Uno boot ladder on side of Nano. So now that Nano, if I attach it to the computer, it will not recognize as a Nano. It will recognize me as an Arduino Uno. So in order to make more space in the chip that is inside the Nano, because it's the same that in, in, in Arduino Uno, so it's nothing changing, but the boot ladder changing. Because for Nano, if you put the boot ladder for Nano, it's uh, give you less space to put the program and run the program because an additional is putting the, the other two pins for uh, for analogic like A6 and A7 and for Arduino Uno the boot ladder has inside more space in giving more space for run the program and stuff like that but you will not uh, be able to use uh, A6 and A7 analogics pins so that's why I needed to 
burn the bootloader Arduino Uno into the Nano in order to make it uh, as a Uno, and then I I, uh, I flash the, the sketch inside the, the Nano. So pay attention if you want to put it in a Nano, make sure that you first put the bootloader as a Uno in. And I will not show now how to put a bootloader because if you Google in YouTube, there is plenty of uh, people shows how to burn a bootloader in, into Uno and how, how to make a Nano to become a Uno with bootloader. So just make some research in YouTube and I'm pretty sure you're gonna find them. So let's now go further to what I prepared for you. So that was the sketch that I, that I mentioned before. Be sure that you have all these, uh, these small sketches in one sketch. Okay, so in my folder, I also prepared the schematic. This is the schematic that I draw it. So I have the pull up resistor for the pushy button that goes to start the testing. So you can see from the 5 volts, I have the 10k resistor, and then the, the button is connected to A3 and then to the ground. So when you push the button you put to the ground uh, A3 and start to test then I add also the reset button so if you can see from reset I come here and I put it to ground then as I say pay attention on these resistors over here because I have let me just make it a bit bigger because this is what gives you the accuracy of this tester so make sure that 470k it's exactly 470k 0.01 tolerance you need to be sure that you have here because i tried first time with just random register 470k without to measure them with the multimeter and i put in them and i have really bad measurements so i tried them to combine more from two resistors to make this value to make them almost all three the same so make sure 470k here 470k here 470k here exactly 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 then the same do with 680 ohms here 680 ohms exactly 680 ohms again here and exactly 680 ohms exactly here to have better results when you are testing two components and you can see the the A0 goes to join between these two resistors and 680 ohms goes to D8. 470K go to D9. Then A1 from Arduino comes on between of these two resistors again. 680 ohms goes to D10. 470 ohms goes to D11. The same with A2 from Arduino comes and goes to between the last two resistors. 680 ohms goes to D12 and 470k resistor goes to D13. And here is the tester header pin. Then moving to the display. From the display the connection are like that so vcc the first pin from a from 1 to 16 so vcc goes to the ground vdd goes to 5 volts then vo 1k resistor to ground rs goes to arduino pin digital 7 RW goes again to ground. Pin E from the display goes to Arduino Digital 6. The next four pins leave them empty, don't connect nothing to it. Then the D4 from displays go to D5 to Arduino. The D5 from display go to D4 to Arduino. The D6 from display go to D3 to Arduino. The D7 from display go to D2 to Arduino. Then, anode is anode that goes to 
positive, so in order to avoid to put another resistors, I just attach it to three volts to Arduino. Then cathode, this cathode goes to the ground. Here, from the RF, there is the 100 nanofarad capacitor that goes to the ground. Also here, please pay attention, make it sure that you don't have too much tolerance on this one because it will gonna affect the capacitance measurements. Then I have attached uh, two pin headers for that you can you can uh, attach it to a nine volt battery. So the positive number one goes to volt in so v, v i n pin from Arduino, and uh, pin number two goes to ground. So this is the schematics. So as I mentioned. And I'm gonna mention again, pay attention to these resistors and to that capacitor to be exactly how it shows there. The zip file, this zip file, so they are gonna be on this on this uh, on this site. So if I go uh, if I go in Google and I put this link, you're gonna find the place from where to download. So put on that and let's go to Google Drive and you can find them also attach it here on Google Drive so if you can see are the tester the folder uh, the zip folder and the schematic so you can just download it from here and now let's turn back to my working page to do some test and compare the accuracy with my multimeter that I have and I remember one gentleman, uh, same in the Arduino groups and stuff like that, where I post the photos of this one, was asking me if uh, if it's uh, if it's uh, measuring also inductance. So let me I prepare some inductors. So let me also give a demonstration on inductance. So let's go back to my working bench right now. So. Back to my uh, working bench. I prepare some components around some capacitors and I'm gonna test also some transistors for this amplifier. Components that I prepared, also some re resistors, and also here some inductors I prepared in order that also a tri triac and also some LEDs. So I uh, how I mentioned before that uh, I come in with the power to the VIN pin. So if you can see here is VIN pin, and I put this plug of two pins together, so that can be powered easy from a nine volt battery. So if you just plug here, you can see it's powering off and it's working. And if you don't have any components, it's gonna stay a bit like that, and then we're gonna say hang no component or damage it. So let's just wait for it see we can see as I, as I mentioned so let's do some testing I'm gonna bring also my multimeter here to do some comparison between accuracy on this one on my multimeter so I'm gonna zoom a bit to can see a bit uh, a bit better a bit the screen of my multimeter so I think here we can be right so let me just position this one here and my multimeter here to make the comparisons so I prefer to power with this battery because it has more power this battery I noticed that a 9 volt battery is drawing a bit more fast I tested a bit and it was drawing more fast so I have also here positive and negative and by the way this one it's a uh, Two cells of 3.7 so I have 7.4 volts that coming in and is working with 7.4 volts so uh, this one by the way doesn't measure inductors so I have only capacitors and also doesn't have that one from H H H V or H E V transistor parameters so I have also another multimeter a very cheap one that has this plug here so 
I don't need this one, so I'm gonna just use this one just to compare the, the transistors with that one to see the accuracy that give me my components tester. So, shall I start with the with some capacitors? So let me start also my multimeter on, and I'm gonna go to try a big one. Uh, uh, this one that uh, is mentioned 220 microfarad to 63 volt. So first I'm gonna give a try with my multimeter to see what my multimeter say. So let's put like that and try to see what my multimeter say about this one. So my multimeter I have a design kilo so let me put in mm, farads. So farads is telling me one oh wait a second because it needs to get charged. So my multimeter say 2091 microfarad. So now let's have a look at my multimeter what it's gonna say about this uh, this capacitor. So I have the pin 1, 2 and 3 and the same here 1, 2, 3 so it's from right to left because it was more easy for me to solder the stuff uh, behind of this uh, multi-hole PCB prototyping board. So pressing this button it will gonna start to test And my multimeter is telling me 2061 so it's like 0 0.4 0 0.4 difference between the multimeter and uh, my uh, my component tester so it's telling me now see now it's going because as long as charging better the the, the component is giving me a bit more better it's also 2082 so it's not that much far so it's accuracy quite good so as I say it's important for that resistors that I mentioned also in the schematics and for capacitor is also this 100 nanofarads here that coming from RF to ground also this one please pay attention and try to find one that is almost exactly 100 nanofarads in order to get good result on on testing uh, capacitors so let's try another capacitor same another electrolytic capacitor, so let's see what I still have in this card. Let's find one here that is telling me that is 100 microfarad with 50 volts. So let's plug on my tester and see the results. So here is the tester. So let's press the button for testing. So let's have a look what the testers say about this capacitor. So the tester is saying that is 103.9 microfarads. <coughs> and it's telling me also the voltage loss inside. So yeah. Now let's have a look my multimeter will say about this 100 microfarad so I'm gonna just connect this and this and wait for the multimeter so 100 uh, five so also, 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 also there I can see it's not that much far away from from the from the accuracy let's now find another capacitor same another electrolytic capacitor that has also a different value. So I have here one of 220 microfarad with 50 volts. So let's also plug this one in my multimeter and to see what my multimeter see about that. So it's going in testing mode. So 
So 185 microfarads. So let's have a look my multimeter what say about this this capacitor. So 187 microfarads. So I can see the accuracy is pretty well, it's not that much. Because also if I measure the resistor, I try my best to find them. And if I can see, in order to get, let me just take the power off here for the moment and to show you something. See, in order to make the 470, I focus, 470K resistor similar, I needed to join two of them so you can see I joined this one with this one in order to get the 470k here this one with this one in order to get so yeah please pay attention on that resistors because that one give the accuracy of this uh, of this multimeter so let's block the screen let's give power again And let's test another, another capacitors here, like these ones. So, here I have uh, 333, this means it's 33 nanofarad capacitor. So, let's have a look what my testers say about it. So my tester say 32 nanofarads. So let's see my multimeter what say about this capacitor. So you can see my multimeter say 31.78. So you can see the accuracy is there. Let's find another capacitor here. So let's see, 224, this is 220 nanofarads. So let's try 220 nanofarads to see the multimeter what say and the tester what the te say about it. So you can see I have 236, 230 nanofarads. So just a little bit more that the, the the capacitor get charged better and let's wait for the final result that is giving me that I think this one because it's top so it's giving me that uh, 228 nanofarads, uh, nanofarads uh, voltage lost and ESR of uh, 8.0 so that was with capacitors I can go over because I have a lot of capacitor but I think you already noticed the the accuracy between them. Now let's test some transistors and I need to turn on also this one in order to compare a bit that uh, that factor over there. So I have here I have here uh, a 2N2907 transistor and emitter is always this one. So in order to get good, uh, good, uh, good uh, results, you need to put the base in number one, collector in number two, header pin and emitter in number three. So as I said, for me, number one is on this side no number one is in the right side and so on so i'm gonna put the base in number one which is here collector in number two which is there and emitter in number three which is there 
So then I'm gonna just press this one. And I can see I have 131 here. This is the HVE. HV, HV. And it's telling me one milliamps, and it's telling me the voltage between base and emitter is 620 millivolt. That was applied on the on the transistor, and I can see it's telling me that the number one is the base, and number two is the collector, and a number three is the emitter. And let's make a comparison with this one. So we're gonna do the same here. Number base on base collector and emitter so so you can see also here I have 140 and my my uh, tester will say 130 something so also here the value is not that much uh, far away from each other let's try another transistor so I have here a BD139, let me focus, so you can see it's a BD139, which is NPN, so in this one, the base, it's this, this pin, so I'm going to put the base in number one, so the number one is, as I say, is in the right side, so it goes here, and let me press the button. So you can see it's telling me that it's uh, 226, 2.1 milliamps, and uh, was applied 631 millivolts on the base emitter. So let's have a look what say the that multimeter about this one. So as I say, base it's here, NPN. So it goes base collector and emitter in these three pins. And now you can see it's uh, 244, 243. So the difference is not that much, so we can, how you can notice. Let's try also a big one like this one. Uh, a tip 3055. So this one, let me just bring some wire on this situation because here in this situation I need some wire so where is the third one I had another wire over there so let me find it it's this one and let me grab another jumper wire in order that I can connect things so I'm gonna put the green on number one I'm gonna put the red in number two. And I'm gonna put the blue in number three. And I'm gonna put pretty sure let me let me understand what we can with the base because my is different on this one so if the transistor comes like that on my board the the base it's this pin yeah so here i have the base in the middle i say that is coming the collector which is this one and on here i have the emitter so Let's press the test and let's see the results. I don't short together. Let me do because maybe they get a bit short together. So let me try to do the retest again. So retesting again is telling me 22.8 and I have number one base, number two collector, number three emitter. So let's try also with this one to see what say. So it's also this one is NPN. So let's do this one. So that's the base on NPN. It is going to base here. 
Okay. Oh, no. That's the collector. The base is this one. So base. Collector is this one. And then emitter goes to this one. So you can see it's almost the same, 27 over here. So yeah, the accuracy is quite good. Okay, let's try let's try a diode. I should have here some diodes. So look, I found a diode over here. So let's try with the diodes. So if I plug a diode over here. Okay, and I'm gonna press the test button. So it's telling me, look, it's telling me that uh, it's connected between one and three. So it's one and three over here. And it's telling me that it's a diode and it's telling you some informations. Then let's try with the triac, which I have here, the triac. Let's see the triac. Here I have a triac, is a focus. It's a BTA08. So let's put it over here. And let's press the test button. And you can see it's telling you it's a triac and you have the gate and pin 1 and 2 and 3 are the phase 1 and phase 2 of the triac. Now let's, let's try some LEDs here. So I'm gonna put two LEDs here, so I'm going to put the minus on the middle in that pin 2 for both of them. Okay, and let's press the testing. So see it's testing one by one, and then it's telling you that you connected between, between uh, one and two in one side, and it's telling me that there is two of them and between 3 and 2 in opposite side and also I can twist it one to be in the same side and we're gonna show me that they go in in series so let me just put it opposite and let's press this test button so now it's flashing together because they're in series and I really don't know why it's showing me here 3 of them because there are only 2 and it's telling me that it's working with 1.99 volts and there is 2 of them here Okay, let's now move into some inductor. So first of all, because as I say, I don't have any other multimeter. So let's check the data sheet of this uh, A21 uh, inductor. So, if you can see here, A21 inductor is this one at the bottom, and it's telling me that should have 820 mic micro Henry, and then micro or milli? Well, for me, it's micro. And it's telling me that as ohms, I should have 2.55 ohms, and I'm not that much with the inductors and I don't know what can be this ADC value 0 0.24 so as I mentioned I don't have other tester for inductor to test the inductor the only thing that we can go is just to see the data sheet and the data sheet is say like that 181 inductor is 820 micro Henry or milli Henry I don't know how it was I say I'm not too much practical with inductors I'm not working too much with inductors so let's now go back to my workbench and see how my tester do on that 8, 821 inductor. 
So let's plug in this inductor as I say A to one. You can see here let's focus A to one inductor. So let's have a look what my tester say about this inductor. So I put it in the pin one and three. Let's press the test button and let's see what we get. So you can see, yeah, 0 0.84 milli Henry. So this means it's 84 micro Henry. So yeah, the data sheet is correct. So it's not that much different, just this 0 0.03, because it should be 80 exactly, 80. But it's not that much. In resistance, I believe it's something that is quite huge because there it was showing me 2.55 and here it showed me just 1.2 ohm. Okay, let's have a look at other inductors that are unknowns, so I don't know nothing about them, so it doesn't have any number, I was trying to understand them. So, if the accuracy is quite good, we can understand straight away from this, from this, uh... so yeah, it's telling me that is 0 0.1 ohm and has uh, 0 0.02 micro milli henry so this is a zero two micro henry so two micro henry let's have a look other inductance that i have around here as i say i'm not practical so i just needed to desolder from some harvesting uh, components usually i'm using yeah i have here a bunch that was uh, i find around the uh, some electronic stuff so I went there and I dig in and I desolder all this stuff so sometimes I'm harvesting some components in order to have here so I have some bridge rectifiers some voltage regulators a 12 volt relay some capacitors some resistors so yeah sometimes I'm harvesting from some old things so I plug this one in and this one is telling me 0 0.1 ohm and it's telling me that is 0 0.01 milli henry let's try the last one that i have i don't have more than that in the inductors here around as i say just i have a huge one i can also try a huge one i'm gonna try a huge one to see it so let's see this one what is telling me so this one is telling me that is same 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 millihertz so i think it's the same like this one because from the same pcb board i desoldered them and let's see as i said i have one quite big it was coming from a quite huge power supply that was was really burned very hard i have also the other pcb board was the microcontroller and all the stuff that was doing so let me grab that PCB board to show you how it's properly burn, burn. So you can see here was really a very huge burn. So I couldn't save nothing. So I just harvest what I manage. Some capacitors here I have it. I don't know where I put this coil. It was another coil, very big one here. I need to find that coil where I put it. But I look around a bit this morning and I couldn't find it. So I find only this one that was in the output stage. So let's try this one will say about this uh, this coil so here i need again to bring my clipper wire so this one is one coil and this one is the second coil because i think it was acting as a transformer so let's have a look Let's have a look what this one was gonna say to me. So this one, plug in this one. And this one I'm gonna plug on this one. And I'm gonna bring it here. And here is telling me that I have 0 0.3 ohms, something like that. And it's telling me that the coil have 2.0910 milli Henry. So it's a huge one, as you can see here. So yeah, those also inductance for those uh, 
gentleman that we was asking me about if those also in the towns. So this was the proof that goes also in the Indian towns. And uh, you see also the accuracy between the data sheet and what was measuring in this one that we know at least how much should be. So this one was to say 82, 8 to 0 and then it's going to be 8 to 3. So yeah, it's uh, let's now make also some tests on resistors. So the same I have here is the that I prepared for for my so by the colors this one should be a 400 470 ohms resistor so if I plug here let's see the tester what say about here so as you can see yeah 470 ohms and let's see now with my multimeter to see the comparison between this and my multimeter. So I'm gonna put on kilo ohms over there and I'm gonna try to test it to see the accuracy. Let me bring it like that. Ah, it's a bit here. And let's see the accuracy on the resistor as well. So multimeter say, Four point no, uh, four seven one point five. Maybe that one is because has leads, and as long the leads also the leads are giving me some some. We can see if I put the list together. No, doesn't tell me nothing. Doesn't tell me. But anyway, that accuracy is not that that much far away from from a multimeter. I noticed then. Me I. I don't have a thyristor, but I know that it's um, measuring also thyristors and is uh, measuring also MOSFETs. Ah, let me bring a MOSFET to, to try also a MOSFET to show that it's when I plug a MOSFET, it's show me a MOSFET. So give me a second to bring the, the MOSFETs here. So I find to don't uh, search too much because I'm gonna spend a lot of time to search for MOSFETs. I find three types of MOSFETs on my, my stock. So I have uh, I, IRF3205, then I have another one. Let's see this one, what is IRF1010? No, yeah. And then I have another one. IRF4905. So let's see the MOSFETs. What's the do with the MOSFETs? So I'm gonna put the MOSFET over there. And let's see what those with the MOSFETs. Every set doesn't make doesn't get the contact good there. Okay. Yeah. So he's telling me that is a P channel MOSFET, and he's telling me that the gate, drain, and source is connected to these pins one, two, three. Then he's telling me that RDS is a zero, no point zero ohms. Let's retest again because in the first line is giving me also some other. And he's telling me the capacitance of it, and he's telling me also. At which voltage I think it was tested 2.1 voltage right now because I run from Arduino no? so let's have a look other MOSFET this one and let's test it this is N channel MOSFET if you can see it's N and the same with the same gate drain and source it's telling me the capacitance, this one was a more low voltage, it's telling me that there is some resistance here, 0.1 ohms, and here it shows me the direction of the diodes inside, so from 3 to 2, and how many millivolts working over there, UF. And let's try the third MOSFET. So it's telling me 
see I put it opposite now because I did it in purpose. It's tell me N E N channel MOSFET. But now on pin number one is the source and pin number two is the drain and the pin number three is the gate. So it's tell me now the diode is inverted between pin one and two. And now I need just to make a quick uh, video after doing all this uh, after making the the tester the first steps that you need to do with this tester so i'm gonna show that uh, that things in, in a second so i'm gonna clean a bit my desk and i'm gonna leave only what i need to do that things that you need to do in the first time uh, once you finish to assemble all the components and before to give the first try on the components what you need to do after you assemble this uh, tester and you give the first time power on you leave it to do this cycle without any components over here you leave it to do the testing and it's gonna show you that uh, unknown component or damaged component is attached to it then you press hold this button until go to the selection and here you have transistor and you clicking function generator also doing the function generated in tester and also doing the PWM uh, signal out and then you can correct the ESR a bit if it's not correctly and here you can measure just resistors here you just measure the uh, capacitors here you can also adjust a bit the correction on microfarads to bring it better to the to the accuracy of the capacitors you go to this section self-test and you prepare the jumpers because you need to make short on this uh, uh, header pins and two capacitor one 100 nanofarads this is 104 and something around 30 microfarads so if it's 333 so i'm gonna also bring this one here to measure them to be sure that are almost 100 nanofarad and 30 nanofarads so i'm gonna test the 100 nanofarads and you can see it's 99.64 so it's quite there and this one which is around 30 nanofarads 31.27 okay so you prepare this stuff because you need to calibrate it so let me just grab my so you go in this uh, section as i say self-test you don't press nothing just leave it like that first i suggest you to short those pins so you short one and i'm shorting the second one so all of them are in short all three and then you just press the button and it will no oh. So let's go back there where you are. You need to press holding this button until it's going the short probes and it's starting the self-test where it will gonna calibrate the the measurement. So you need to wait like that until he's doing his stuff. So doing a test one reference of uh, 1065 millivolts. See so we can say I have a bit of difference between the resistor. I tried my best, but if you can see, there is some difference between them. Now it's telling you to take out the, the shorts jumpers over here. And now you need to wait. We're gonna try to bring to zero, if you can see it here. And it's trying to calibrate the, the points to be the same in base of the resistors over there and see if it's everything correct it just shows you the same here but see I have some difference between resistors so well you understand that is the maximum now when it's C0 you need to put in the 100 nanofarad capacitor and you wait for it until it's doing also the stuff so uh, i repeat again c0 100 nanofarad you need to plug in and you need to wait again so 
So let's wait. See, now it's trying to calibrate the the the, the, the capacitance. See, it's telling me that I put in 100 nanofarads, and now you need just to wait a bit, and it will gonna show. It will gonna ask you to put. See now we still need to put a capacitor that is around 30 nanofarads. So I'm gonna put this one, as I say, is 31 nanofarads. So let's plug this one in. So it's telling tell you now the test is end. And now you have up and running a, a good uh, a good uh, tester. So here if you just want to control only transistors you go transistor and you just keep holding in and here it will gonna test only transistor it will not test capacitance or something else and the same to go out from here you just press long and you go back but I need to wait until he's doing this this self uh, this testing so then you keep holding long and you go back here he is doing the function generator, he is doing the PWN signal, he is doing, as I say, something with the capacitor ESR, checking the ESRs, and so on. Yeah, so, once I post that pictures, I saw really uh, high numbers of subscribers to my channels and I'm gonna say thanks and I know all of you was waiting this video and maybe also I get number because I post in some audio groups hi-fi and audio groups about this amplifier that I start to build it and also there I mentioned that soon I'm gonna have the video when I'm gonna I'm gonna start to solder this uh, this uh, components on this uh, amplifier and I'm gonna give a test so pretty sure also for there I, I get some uh, some subscriber and I'm pretty sure that also you guys are waiting this video to come so stay tuned yeah because as I said once I finish this video yesterday as I say I spent lots of time to go with this tester one by one each components to show me exactly the same number for left channel and right channel because as I say I want to to make a, a really high quality sound and then also I test some transistors and uh, in my schematic the first transistor is a PNP transistor each I can go with BC251 I can go with this 2N907 transistor and also I find that I, in my stock I find two of them thanks God I find two of them 2N uh, let's focus it to uh, 3906 and if I'm going to check the amplification uh, numbers this one is really high so before to start the solder I'm pretty sure I'm gonna give another test with this transistor on the breadboard to see if I'm getting more gain with this transistor because this one compared with this one you're gonna see the difference so let me just try to show you the difference so uh, the base is in the middle here so i just need to swap it like that a bit uh, but i don't want to make it short no i don't need to do like that because i can just plug it because that's why i put a double rail here to be more easy for the transistor so if i go base on the number one Hope that that one is gonna be the collector and here is an emitter otherwise i'm gonna twist it over so let's have a look because i want to show you that difference so that's why you can see no i need to put the collector on number two so i need to put it opposite like that so let's do it again so collector goes there and base is there Wait. let me try again a bit to make them like that so come here. Something doesn't let me put that. Okay. 
Okay, so now let's try again to see the difference why I'm telling that I want to try this one because see, this one the amplification factor is 289, so has a really high gain can give me on that amplifier. Respect of this one, which is which is just 100 something, see 131. So I'm gonna give a try again on the breadboard with that one because with this one I already tried on the breadboard. I'm giving better result than a PC251. And I'm gonna try now with this one. If this one gives me better results, definitely on my final amplifier board I'm gonna solder this transistor. So yeah, stay tuned. And as I promised, I'm gonna come soon also with that video about the amplifier. And what can I say more? I hope you don't get bored with this video and I'm pretty sure that you was really excited to come this video when I when I talk about this uh, tester. I find it really good accuracy, good accuracy between, as I say, and I mentioned again, be, pay attention on this capacitor and on that resistors to make them exactly the same to get a better results. And after you build, please, leave a comment down below how how accuracy is giving you because maybe you have better than me resistors at home maybe yeah me i couldn't find actually i didn't have any resistor with the 0.1 tolerance all of them are one to five tolerance that i have because those one the precision resistor are quite more expensive so it's the first things that I'm doing something that needs to be some precise. So I think I'm going to look uh, to buy only that value of resistor on the precision of 0.01 tolerance. Yeah, please leave a comment how it works for you, this, uh, this tester. And uh, stay tuned, subscribe, activate the notification bell because it's not only this amplifier that uh, is in project. I have more projects. I also in the middle to do a nice uh, wall clock with the uh, ESP8266 and WS2812 uh, LEDs, uh, addressable LEDs, and to make a nice wall clock, what is running the seconds, the hours. So I'm in the middle of that, so I, I, I just stop it a bit because I want to do I want to go over with my amplifier first and as I say the power supply is almost ready I soldered them and now as I say I'm gonna give another try on the breadboard with that with that uh, transistor and if I get better result than the 2N2907 definitely on the final project I'm gonna solder those transistors there for the moment, I'm gonna say bye bye. Thanks for all the subscribers, and I hope that uh, my videos uh, that you find them on my channel gives you a good attention. I'm gonna try, as I say, to come with more videos and any more. Uh, I'm planning also to do a playlist only with how to make things like where I can explain and I can provide all the codes uh, or all the schematics and things that also you can just watch the video and try to make something like I'm doing if you might need it in your in your life because I hope that things from Aliexpress from China they really come very late because I also I want to make my own solder solder station so i buy a handle with all the wire and i want to use a, maybe a sdm32 because it's more faster than an arduino to make the controller or oh, i'm gonna use an arduino to make the controller for the station with the display with the OLED display or some other kind of display to show me the temperature and stuff like that so yeah, stay tuned, please subscribe, activate the notification bell, and for the moment I'm gonna say bye bye and see you for the next video.